Hey man, this is Retro Ralph. Cowboy Retro Ralph. You know, in Texas, we say that bigger is better. But you know what? Not if you're the LDK game. This little puppy packs a mean punch. This little dude right here is a badass dude. So on this episode, we're gonna check this puppy out. So saddle up, relax for a minute, and let's do this. Hey guys, today we're going to unbox and check out the LDK game. This is an open source handheld game system, so kind of cool. So it's got uh, quite a bit of emulation support, and I'm going to look at that in a second with you. But uh, let's just go over the box real quick. So this is actually the yellow unit. Uh, it comes in a white and black, and it also comes in sort of like this gray translucent color. I'm assuming maybe that one's black, but uh, it looks kind of gray to me. Um, Supposedly in the box is the console, an AV cable, the USB cable, and a user manual. On the side over here, it tells you a little bit about what's supported in the system. It's a 16-bit operating system, um, and it has emulation support. To my knowledge, it actually supports a lot more than what's listed here. So um, it's just saying supports Arcade, which would probably be MAME or Final Burn Alpha, Game Boy Advance. Uh, Famicom, Super Famicom, and Sega Genesis series. So I think there's more support than what this what it says right here, but uh, let's let's wait till we fire it up to check it out. Let's um let's open it up and see uh, what this thing looks like. So I'll take the top off the box there. All right, so it's wrapped nicely. Uh, get it out of there. Okay, so that's um that's what the front of it looks like. Uh, but let's put it aside for now and just see what else is in the box. Do not see a manual. Well, that's interesting. Okay, there's um, a micro, yeah, a micro USB power cable, and this also is supposed to work as a data cable too. Uh, only problem with this is that there's no power brick, so I guess you'll have to have one of those. I'm sure if you're into tech, you probably have a million of those. So there's your power cable, and it has a TV out cable, which is. Um, composite so uh, we probably won't be using that but I guess it's kind of interesting that it came with it, it would have been nice if it had HDMI out but the unit is relatively small so HDMI out would have been a little difficult so let's put that aside and we'll take a closer look at the unit all right guys so here it is here is the LDK game so what you're gonna get on the side here is you're gonna get an SD card slot and this could be used to uh, add games although there is a um, SD card that's actually in here that has the operating system on it behind the battery uh, you could also put games on that so it's a 16 gig SD card it comes with the operating system on it already uh, but you could put games on that as well so just keep that in mind although it's really reserved for the operating environment uh, there's no reason why you couldn't put games on that as well um, so right alongside the SD card slot you got these two buttons and these two buttons are for brightness and I'll show you that once we turn it on you've got your d-pad which feels uh, feels pretty good actually and you've got your start and select button and you've got your four um, action buttons as well as your shoulder buttons on top which are very 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 clicky and feel nice now some have said that during gameplay it's hard to reach these so um, you know that's that's up to you whether or not you feel comfortable with that or not but that's where they are on this unit so just keep that in mind um, on the side over here you've got uh, volume control right here it's a volume dial You've got your on and off switch and at the top you have your micro USB for charging and data so you can put this port into charging mode or data mode um, so if you need to um, you know add files or do anything you can do it that way or you can just take the SD card out and put it in a card reader and then you've got your 3.5 millimeter you know headphone jack so if you want to listen to it uh, privately so I'm gonna fire this thing up real quick and keep in mind, I am running the stock firmware on this thing right now, so it is not running any special firmware, although there's been some new firmware that's been released that adds some additional functionality to it. 
Um, although out of the box, it's uh, pretty pretty interesting. So I'll, I will also throw a disclaimer that I'm doing this. Uh, I've only spent a little bit of time on it, so I want this to be a very realistic view of what you're going to get and how you're going to experience it out of the box. So um, right away, there's a menu system that drops you right into a folder with uh, uh, platforms or um, or uh, console emulators. So uh, to navigate this menu, you actually use these shoulder buttons. So if I hit the right one, it's gonna jump over one. This folder actually has some homebrew games in it, uh, one of which is Street Fighter uh, the Remake, which is you know the fan version of Street Fighter 4, which is really, really cool that it's on here. Like to me, this is a $50 unit. It's almost worth it just because of that. So really cool, because that's a neat game to play on the road. Uh, and then the one, you go one over, and this is gonna be additional um, emulators uh, for, for game consoles. Sorry, I think I said, uh, I think I said the other one was game consoles, but there's actually some spread in between here because there's some game consoles here and there's some additional emulators for game consoles here. So just, uh, you know, you can explore and check it out. The one thing I'll say is it's got a plethora of options. Uh, and it is an open source unit, so it's not something you're going to turn on and it's going to give you a nice clean games list. You're going to have to kind of do some work to get this thing going. So you are going to have to load your own games and things like that. So to put it, uh, to try a game out real quick, we'll, uh, we'll go to the SNES emulator. And you'll see it gives me the option for internal card or internal XD, SD card or external. Uh, we are using the internal one, so I'm going to select that. And then you'll see there's a folder. Um, hopefully that zooms okay. There's a folder called ROMs. Uh, and then I have, um, let's see, there should be an SNES folder. And we'll try Donkey Kong Country. So I'll wait for that to load up and we should be off and running. All right, so here is Donkey Kong Country. So uh, it appears to be playing, uh, playing fairly well. So that's a good thing. Um, I've, I've only tried this a couple times so far with different games and uh, everything so far that I've tried seems to be running pretty well. So um, just to put it into perspective, there's obviously lots of emulators on this, so you have tons and tons of options. So like I said, this is gonna be like a system that's got maximum flexibility. So one of the things that's interesting about it, sorry, it's hard to play this through the camera, with the behind the camera. Um, so one of the things about this and on, on this emulator, this is the button to get you back in the menu. One of the things about this is it's, an, it's open source. So there's lots and lots and lots of options. So just, just be aware that if you want to get into something like this, you're going to have a lot of flexibility, but that also means that you're not just going to turn it on and start playing games. There's going to be some work up front um, you know, to get it set up. All right, guys, let's check out Duke Nukem 3D real quick. I'm just so curious how that would run on a device like this. Oh wow, it actually runs pretty fast. That's nice. I wasn't actually expecting it to run that fast. So I mean, there's no real easy way to aim. You kind of have to hope that the, car that the guys are on your level, otherwise you can't really aim for them very easily. So it's kind of neat that it's on here. I just don't know how, you know, it's kind of fun to play it, but I don't know how much you're gonna play time you're gonna get out of it. Just considering that it's not that easy to uh, to play, but but kind of fun that it's on here. Let's bring up a fan favorite. It does allow you to put the frames per second uh, in the corner there, so you can kind of see how the game's performing. And this one pretty much should stay at 60 frames per second the majority of the time, which is good. Uh, keep in mind, I am playing this like behind a camera, so it's, it, it's a little tough for me to play it like this, but uh, I just want to give you an idea of the gameplay and everything. But I find it pretty enjoyable. It definitely plays Sonic well. Um, so, so Mega Drive games, at least from my perspective, Genesis and Mega Drive games, seem to play okay. I tried a couple other than this one, so I'm gonna actually quit out of here and I, there are a bunch of options it's really hard for you to see but you can set some options on screen resolution you can put um you can put scan scan lines in and things like that here's another favorite of mine streets of rage 2 it also plays really well um, it maintains 60 frames per second so that's a good thing i'm always axel i don't know it just always happens that way i just i just love playing axel i don't know what it is but uh, Streets of Rage plays uh, really good. The sound sounds good. Uh, no issues there. The 
So, you know, this is turning out to be a pretty cool little portable system. I love the form factor of it. The form factor is sweet and it feels pretty good in your hands. So, I mean, outside of fighting games, like fighting games, might you might struggle with it with the shoulder buttons, but, uh, but I don't think it's unplayable with fighting games. All right, here, I'm going to exit out of that. We'll try a couple more games uh, just so you can kind of put it into perspective, uh, you know, what you're going to get here. All right, let's get it going, man. So, uh, Mario Kart appears to be playing at, um, whoa, it's been a while since I played this, uh, on an older console at least, not the, the new versions I play quite a bit with my son, but anyway, so I mean, it runs, it runs at, uh, it runs at full speed too, so everything seems to be running the way you'd expect it to, which is a good thing. So we're going to do PlayStation game. Now, I'd be surprised if this plays PlayStation games well, but it is advertised that it can, so might as well give it a shot. So we'll try, um, we'll try Crash Bandicoot, which doesn't... Okay, so clearly you guys can see off the, off the bat that uh, there's a lot of slowdown here, and it's definitely running, you know, not even close to the frame rate it should be. Uh, the one thing I will say, though, that's encouraging is with, with the custom firmware, uh, we might be able to improve this by, you know, by improving the clock speed because you can actually adjust the clock speed in the custom firmware. Uh, and again, like like I mentioned, this is definitely a device that is meant for you to be able to tinker with. It's not necessarily a device that you just turn on and it's you know out of the box and you have this amazing experience. Although there's a couple of homebrew games that do. Oop, there's a couple of homebrew games that do work right out of the box, and I'll show you those here in a second. All right, so enough of that. Okay, let's check out uh, the homebrew game. So the one I'm most interested in and the one that I find uh, amazing is on here is um, the Streets of Rage remakes. All right, for those of you who have never played this, again, like I said, a fan version of the game, and it's supposed to be a continuation of the series, so a fan continuation of the series. Although this year we are getting an official Streets of Rage 4 release, hopefully, even though the release date still isn't set. So I have, we, we tested Streets of Rage 2 on here. Uh, I feel like this is playing with a bit of slowdown in comparison to to the other uh you know the mega drive or the genesis version so again this is one of those things where maybe with the custom firmware if you're going to buy this device you may put the custom firmware on it i'm thinking you might be able to overclock the device make it run a little bit better than it does right now so uh, it's playable it's just the frame rate's definitely reduced a bit but it's definitely playable and a quite fun game if you haven't played this before, so give it a shot if you haven't. I know I only played a couple of the games, but uh, there's so many emulators on here, so your options are pretty much endless. And like I said, this being an open source device, it gives you a lot of flexibility to do uh, whatever you need to, and the community seems to be supporting this device fairly well. So uh, I like the way it feels, I like the buttons. Uh, you know, obviously it's got some issues with gameplay on certain games, but I think, you know, with the custom, if you play around with the custom firmware, you overclock it a bit, uh, you may be able to get a lot more out of it than you'd think. But this is going to be one of those devices, I think, that I'm going to throw in my bag when I'm traveling, and it'll be a nice little form factor to throw in there. I do have other handheld devices, such as the BitBoy version 1 and 2. Uh, I think the BitBoy has a little bit better of a screen, but I just, I'm in love with this form factor. It is so neat. Uh, and it comes in a, it comes in other colors too. There's like this translucent gray one. Uh, I, I picked up the yellow. I thought it was neat. So um, it's for the price. I think it's really neat. But the thing I'm going to tell you, I'm going to repeat this a bunch of times, is if you're not into tinkering with things and you just want it to work, this may not be the device for you because it will require a little bit of work on your part. You need to load the games and things like that. Uh, also, you may want to tweak with the emulators a bit and you know work you know deal with overclocking and that kind of thing so if that's not your thing this wouldn't be the device for you but if you like tinkering and you want full flexibility this is a really neat option 
So, all right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I want to hear what you guys think of this thing. And, you know, as always, I appreciate the support. And we'll see you on the next one.